Okay, what I need to do here is uh, mill a couple slots um, here for the for the pins that uh, act like dogs on the uh, MT2 uh, drive on the uh, mill. Um, I already measured uh, the uh, pegs and the uh, difference between the uh, diameter of this piece and uh, and the uh, minimum or the inside uh, um, diameter for the uh, dogs and uh, so I got to take uh, about 0.0495 off of uh, each side and um, so that's about uh, 49 and a half uh, thousandths so I'll probably just go 50 thousandths so what I'm going to do here start it up uh, try to uh, find the uh, the midpoint uh, you know just where the the ball starts touching and then feed down that far and then flip it over and uh, feed in from there so we'll try to get through through this quick
And I should have mentioned uh, before uh, there was a uh, the dogs on the uh, on the thing are a quarter inch because um, I couldn't get a end mill to or a quarter inch end mill. Um, if I tried to hold it like this and use the uh, the sides of a quarter inch end mill, it wasn't long enough to be able to reach. So I had to get a uh, quarter inch uh, ball nose, and um, and so I was using that to uh, create the notches instead. We'll do a, a test uh, fit over here. Um, I left the uh, I left it in the five C collet that I was using to hold the uh, thing. Since the five C collet is indexed by a pin, I figured if I had to um, if I had to go in and end up having to um, increase the uh, depth on here, I'd at least be uh, real close as long as I don't move the five C collet. But we'll see how our measurements do. And you see, uh, they went pretty good here. So even with it uh, just in, the, uh, I'll put this in and just kind of spin it by hand a little bit. They're at least driving it uh, here. A little bit without uh, too much play in there, so looks like uh, I did pretty good. Hey guys, sorry. I didn't realize that uh, my SLR camera that I was uh, using to film the uh, the milling part, uh, the horizontal milling part of the uh, 
key way was uh, battery was so low. Uh, once I realized it, it was halfway through the you know the finish uh, slot there, so I just uh, finished up. But as you can uh, see there, or hopefully you can uh, see the uh, the cutter. Getting used to uh, looking at the screen backwards. The cutter goes on there uh, fairly well. Um, a little bit of slop in there, uh, although a lot of that slop is coming from the uh, cutter itself, so maybe a little bit bigger than uh, one. But so um, since that uh, cut off here. Um, one thing is as we were going through and kind of seeing and I made a few comments that uh, I found that uh, when I was doing the plunge cut in on this end I hadn't uh, locked down the uh, the y-axis on the uh, on the table and it was actually then trying to push the uh, part away and with the uh, lever um, uh, setup that is on the mill right now. It was uh, allowing it to do so and then as uh, the Atlas manual says is to, you know, it, it says not even to try climb milling but um, you see the comments I'll probably put on the video you know when you would see the cutter go in and then stop. The, the belts don't hold on well enough there and I may have actually a little bit too wide a belt it was probably a good thing too um, so once I realized that uh, I locked down the Y and was able to get the plunge cut in uh, well enough um, I did also find that the uh, Gibbs were a, were a little loose on the uh, on the Z um, so I had to uh, get those tight, and, and that started, uh, and that made that a lot better too. So I'm going to uh, include a little bit after after this here, since the video for cutting this key was cut out a little bit. I had uh, done a, a practice uh, key slot on a uh, on another piece, like I said. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of that video on the end here. I got some uh, spacers out of the making spacers since I didn't have any keyway brooches um, for to make the internal ones for the uh, spacers. Um, I'll just add a little extra video, like I said, from from milling the other um, keyway, the practice keyway, and then uh, later once the spacers get here, I'll uh, find something to uh, try to do with the new arbor. And, and post one last video here on it. Hopefully uh, you guys have enjoyed the, this so far here and enjoy a little bit more of the, uh, the bonus footage after this. Hey. Also, I, I thought I'd show you real quick the uh, swing arm because I don't know if the other video that I shot the other day for, for a different one, if I kept it. Uh, but uh, right here is the arm for raising the knee up and down. And this is currently, like I said, this is how this knee is set up. I got another, I got another one that has more of a traditional hand, hand wheel um, mechanism on it. So it was a little bit more difficult and a little less precise, but I was just taking uh, this up, and when I touched off, then I just had to continue. And I used my uh, long 5 inch dial indicator mounted uh, up here and indicating down on, on the knee to move up the uh, eighth inch that I needed to uh, total for the, uh, for the depth of cut. And then the uh, travel is uh, controlled by this mechanism here 
and whoop, whoop, there goes the cutting oil. Um, and so I just started off on the, on the one end um, as far as, as I could go there and then use this mechanism by holding pressure and hopefully I'm not in your way. I'll have to do a look at that again and, and then just keeping pressure until I got up close to where I was almost hitting, you know, this end of the of the piece. And like I said, uh, I had to loosen the, uh, or I had to tighten down the y-axis here when I was plunging, otherwise I was trying to back up and climb cut. And then, uh, as you were seeing, it was uh, trying to stop. But now on to uh, the, to the, the the footage of uh, milling the test piece. <laughs> 